She fell in love with Korean food after visiting Seoul with her mother. After she returned to Australia, she started producing videos about Korea. Her YouTube channel, Hoju Sara, is hugely popular as she introduces landmarks, foods, and unique experiences in both Korea and Australia. Meet Sarah Holmes, a content creator who loves Korea and Australia on Heart to Heart. Hana, set, Well, joining me today is uh, food and travel YouTuber, Sarah Holmes. So welcome, Sarah Holmes, to our program, everyone. Uh, would you like to say hello to everyone watching? Sure. Um, hi, everyone watching. Uh, I'm Sarah. <laughs> Not too sure what to say exactly. <laughs> hello. Hello. Okay, so once again, thank you for joining us on our show, Heart to Heart. Now, you have your YouTube channel. I introduced you as a food and travel YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about food and you talk about travel. Um, tell us about your YouTube channel. It's called Hoju Sara. Yes. Yes, tell us about it. Um, so Hoju in Korean uh, means uh, Australia, which is mm -hmm. where I'm from. And then Sara, which is my name, if you say Hoju as Sara, it also sounds like I live in Australia. Ah, yes. So it's like Australian Sarah, I live in Australia. And so I do a lot of videos on um, Korean food because I love Korean food. Mm -hmm. So I like to find, um, they say matchup in Korean, I like to find really tasty restaurants or cafes and I like to sh show people that. So if they want to know where to go when they travel somewhere, mm -hmm. they can look up and be like, I want to go to this restaurant. And so I do that. And then sometimes I like to do like activities when you go. So sometimes around Australia, I like to find water parks or ah. um, tourism-y things, I would say. But you mainly focus on like foods because I've seen a lot of video postings of you talking about food. Yes. Right, and actually trying food. Yes. And we call that mukbang yep. in Korean. Traditionally, a mukbang, it sort of started out as um, uh, live streaming, people would eat quite a large amount of food, and uh -huh. that's kind of how it started out, but now it's kind of taken on a more broad term. So mukbang is, it translates to literally eating program, mm -hmm. and so it tends to be, you know, when you eat and you talk about the food, and that's kind of it in its sort of basic form, uh -huh. but the way I tend to do it is um, I don't tend to eat like a lot. I like to edit it, and I like to show that the the cafe or the restaurant and close-ups of the food and wow. and things like that. But it does focus on me eating a lot and, right. and talking about the food a lot, yeah. Okay. So it's, a, I guess, a combination of introducing places to go to, restaurants, plus the food, right? You talk yeah. about the food, you eat it and talk about the food. I mean, you've tried so many different kinds of Korean foods. So uh, of the many different kinds of Korean foods that you've had, which dish mm. would be your favorite? I think because I get, I get asked this question a lot, even uh -huh. like on live streams, and it's really hard because there's so many that I like. I have a, a list as long as my arm, mm -hmm. but I think at the moment, the most memorable is jokbal, which is pig's feet, mm -hmm. because I used to be quite a picky eater as a kid, and I remember the first time someone said, let's go eat jokbal, mm -hmm. inside I was like, oh, it's pig's feet, like what if I can't eat it? Yeah. And, but I was kind of stubborn, so I didn't want to tell them that I, I didn't want to do it. So I was like, oh yeah, no, I can do that. And I had it, and I really, really liked it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. Oh, my goodness. If they sell this in Australia, I think Australians would want to eat it. it right? yeah. And now it's one of my favorite food. I, I had it for dinner last night, oh, and really? like, I, I love it so much. And it's, cause it, especially because it's hard to get mm. in Australia. So when I'm in Korea, I want to have some. And it's one of those foods that I was like, if I had been you know, close-minded about it, I uh -huh. never would have tried. Because in English, if you hear pig's feet, we don't have that dish in Australia. Mm. You think, oh, like that's different. I don't know about that, but I'm really, really, yeah. That's, that's probably the most memorable for now. But there's, it's like when you ask a mom which is her favorite child, you can't, <laughs> you that's can't true. pick. I yeah. like what I like so much. Is there a particular dish that you would love to try? Something you haven't had the courage to try Ooh. yet, or I've tried. I feel like I've tried a, a lot, especially before this, before last weekend. It uh -huh. was um, choge, which is um, clam. 
Yeah, yeah like, or like, is it scallops or? Uh, I think, yeah, clams. Yeah, because yeah, uh-huh. I hadn't had that, and I went to Busan, oh. and they do it on the grill with the, yeah. and there's, oh, that was so good, and that was something, because I. I'm not used to eating a lot of um, variety of seafood. It's, mm-hmm. it's normally just kind of fish and and like octopus in Australia, mm-hmm. and so I wanted to try and broaden that out. So that that was very good. I, yeah. yeah, I liked that. That was really good. Yeah. Now, we're talking about the different types of foods you've tried and mm-hmm. the foods you've introduced to uh, you know people talked about. Um, but when it comes to actually um, doing a mukbang, mm-hmm. a mukbang program, or, or videoing one. What would you say is most important? What's most important when it comes to shooting a mukbang? Mm. For me, I think it's finding a restaurant that has food that you really enjoy. Mm. Because for me, if I watch a mukbang, I want to see someone who really likes what they eat. I don't want to watch people in pain. Yeah. I don't want to watch people, you know, having a hard time. I want to see people enjoy food. Uh-huh. So I think the research beforehand, um, and you know, maybe even going there beforehand to make sure the food is good. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, technically wise, I, uh, technically, technically wise, I think it's important to have the camera positioned so you can see the food, because mm. sometimes that makes it a bit awkward because you have to like kind of push a chair out in the middle of the restaurant to get your camera yeah, far yeah. back uh-huh. enough. But it's so nice when you can see the food when someone's eating; it's quite pretty. And I like to get the close-ups of the food. Mm-hmm. Uh, traditionally, mukbang is just one camera, right? And you can see the food, but there's no close-ups. But I like to uh, take the time yeah. beforehand to, to film that. I think it. So, I mean, you have given us an example of uh, how you do mukbangs and mm-hmm. what's important to actually shoot a mukbang. Um, if you could show us how a mukbang is actually shot, I, I'm sure our viewers would have a better idea of what we're talking about. So, um, are you ready for it? Yep, I can do that. Okay, so yes, let's uh, move over there and uh, show us how it's done. Okay, sure. Okay, so Sarah, we have a table in front of us uh, with some food, a yep. plate full of food. So, um, what do you usually do when you do these mukbangs? So when I do them, because my audience is mainly Korean, mm-hmm. they they know what topoki is, they know what sundae is. So I don't really need to explain that too much. Uh-huh. But I like to try a bit. It's important for me not to eat necessarily a lot, but to eat good food. Okay. And so I tend to like eat it, and I like to describe the taste as I go. Mm-hmm. And so it's quite it's quite simple, mm-hmm. really. But I think we're going to do something a little bit different today. Right. Because Arirang's audience is all uh-huh. foreigners, right? That's true. So yep. you you do have um yep. yes. We're airing live right now. Yep, on Facebook. On Facebook. So we have our audience here yep. and we have our audience watching. So this will be um, a bokbang for our Adidang viewers yep. that are watching. So, all right, so uh, give it a shot. Yep, so I think we should explain then for um, anyone who doesn't know what these foods are. Mm-hmm. So we have topoki here, which is um, spicy rice cakes. Uh-huh. So it's um, one of my favorite foods. It's kind of has a texture of noki with a spicy uh, red pepper sauce, uh-huh. I guess. Yeah. And this one, I think, has quail eggs in it and yes. uh, fish cakes <laughs> as well. Uh-huh. And it uh, does taste a bit sweet as well, okay? Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, nowadays they tend to put in like some sugar or mm-hmm. sometimes people put in honey even, ah, but that's a bit rarer, yeah. Okay. And then the next one we have is twigim, mm-hmm. which um, it's, it sort of just translates to fried things, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have kinmari, which is the sweet potato noodles wrapped in seaweed mm-hmm. and then fried. I think I can see some dumplings. Squid. Squid. Yeah. Sometimes there might be some potato in there too, uh-huh, some sweet potato. Uh-huh. I think there's sweet potato down there, yeah. I love the sweet potato one. It's good, uh-huh. And lastly, we have... Sunde. Sunde. Yes. So sunde is something quite interesting because uh, we... There's something like this in, in England a little bit similar, mm-hmm. but here it's, it's like... Um, it has the, the, the tangmyeon, the, the... The glass noodles? The glass noodles, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But it's... Um, Pig's blood? That's what so, they say. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. Uh-huh. Which in, in England, there's uh, black pudding, I think it's called, oh. which is a, similar, but not with the noodles. But we mm-hmm. don't really have it in Australia. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to, this is, because I'm very, very clumsy, I'm going to hold one of these so okay. I don't spill on my skirt. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is my tip. <laughs> okay. okay, let's try. I also okay. like to show the camera as well. Mm-hmm. Everyone watching Topoki. Ah. Okay, and here's okay. the Okay, and I like to cheers onions. as well. Cheers. Chopsticks cheers? Oh. This is, this is what, I don't know why, that just became a thing. Okay. <laughs> cheers. Mm. 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 Cold but good. Cold but good. Oh, this is, oh, it's spicy. Mm, it is quite spicy, this mm. one. <laughs> no, mm. but it's good. Mm. I like to dig straight in. 
oh, this looks like gunmandu, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites because when I was at uh, the university on exchange, mm -hmm. I couldn't order anything on the phone except for jajangmyeon and gunmandu. Mm -hmm. So that's what I used to order in. Okay, the jajangmyeon is like um, Chinese mm. noodles that we mm. will find in Korea. Mm. Okay, so here we are trying the foods. Okay. When I do the film, uh -huh. there's a lot of have to cut out of me eating. Because <laughs> you can't talk very well when there's food That's in your true. mouth. Yeah. But doesn't stop me. Chopsticks. Mm. Very good with mm. chopsticks. Okay, so this is sundae. sundae. I don't order Sarah's sundae trying. much, but mm. it's. Yeah, because I always want tteokbokki if I go, mm. so I just pick that. Yeah, same here. Mm. Okay. Very well, good. <laughs> That's what you have to do if you can't talk. You have to show your love yeah. through your body. <laughs> okay, so we're showing our Arirang viewers mm. how a bokbang is, is done. Mm. Can we can we check some of the mm. messages that have been coming up? Sorry, I'm just still eating. <laughs> old, hab old habits die hard. Mm. Okay. So we have uh, nokwa. Oh, I don't think we're doing nokwa today. Oh, someone said it's like Polish haggis, the the sun, the oh, sundubu. Um, ah, the, the sunday. Oh, so sunday. Always sundubu. <laughs> Yeah, there's, it's like, because, yeah, there's a lot of dishes in other countries where they do use, like, pig's blood and stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not in Australia, but mm. um, it's, I mean, it, it just kind of tastes like a sausage with noodles. It doesn't taste, like, particularly metallic, I right, find. Right, right, uh-huh. Mm. Okay, so... Ah, uh, sundae hanguk sausage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, uh. yeah, Korean, Korean sausage, that's right. Sara, you speak English so well. You speak English so well, obviously, yeah. because yeah, Sarah usually speaks Korean. You do speak, in the videos, yeah, yeah, in the videos. So normally she's speaking Korean to her audience. That's why, um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes people get surprised when I speak English because uh, it's, it's pretty much only Korean in the they're videos. They're used to but, speaking yeah. Korean, but actually, yeah, English is obviously my native language. Let's okay. go back and see. Wow, it is well. Wow. Yeah, maybe we could check out. <laughs> maybe. J1, don't worry about the explanation because Yummy Sands will do the job. See, because normally on my channel, I don't Ooh. need to explain too much because mm -hmm. Koreans know what the, right, what the right, food is. Right. It's more like more eating, mm. which is which is the fun part. Okay. Germans have a similar one too. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Because mm. I only knew of the black, black pudding, which is... But that's like flour and things mm -hmm. in the sausage rather than noodles. Okay. But yeah. Uh, I guess we're going to have to say goodbye to yes. you. Yes. Bye, guys. Yeah. We have to finish now. EJ, yeah, good bye. night, y'all. Annyeong. Thanks. Pyong. Pyong, pyong, pyong. Pyong. Aww. Can we just keep this for me and I'll finish it later? Maybe we should keep I'll it. I'll just yes. eat it on the bus okay, or something. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's go. Let's go. and continue our time. <laughs>
yeah, so it's, it's interesting how it's sort of evolved from try this mm -hmm. ridiculous spicy noodle to now I'm doing some of the... Because the, not, not many Koreans love the spicy noodle challenge, but like tteokbokki and jokbal and stuff, there's a lot of Koreans who love that. Mm -hmm. and when I moved on to that food, they were like, we want to try some... Try some more Korean mm -hmm. food now. Well, tteokbokki, as you mentioned, it's a type of like street food you'll find yeah, yep. pretty much everywhere. Um, one of my favorites, actually. Yes. <laughs> it's great um, as a late night snack even. Yes. Yeah. Because it's the kind of thing, if you're not used to that texture, mm -hmm. when they first um, bit into it, a lot of them didn't know how to handle it because it's a very kind of chewy texture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like the closest thing is gnocchi that we uh -huh. have in Australia. But it's the kind of thing, the more you eat, the more you kind of get addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And so some of the friends at the beginning of the video had quite negative reactions. They were like, oh, this is weird, I don't understand it. <laughs> but by the end of the video, they were like, this is actually really good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, since then I've had friends asking me, can you make me tteokbokki again? Can you take me to get tteokbokki? Uh -huh. And so I think that one overall, I think had the best reactions for sure. Tteokbokki. I made this myself. It's a pasta. I didn't expect that. That's weird. I don't mind it. I mean, textures. Mm. Mm. No. Taste, texture? Neither. <laughs> no, I love the texture, like oh, the really? chewiness, yeah. It's just odd. Yeah. It's different. Just really odd. Do you think you could get used to it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the first one to now, it's nowhere near as mm. bad. It's really gaining traction. Mm. I'm getting around it. Need a... Coming on board? Mm. Yeah, sure. Mm. So, Sarah, when did you... Uh, when and how did mm. you first come across Korean culture? Uh, that was... I think... I, I worked it out the other day. I think it was about 2006 or 2007. Mm -hmm. And my friend actually gave me a CD with all these music videos on it. Uh -huh. And um, from different countries, but I fell in love with, um, do you know Dumbang Shingi? Oh yes. TVXQ? Uh -huh. Yeah, I fell in love with them. And it was back before like YouTube was really a thing. So it was like in really low quality. I couldn't see their faces, mm. but I love the music and I love the, the dancing. And mm -hmm. so that's how I first kind of found out about Korea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in a, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. But mum and I used to listen to the music a lot because she really liked the oh, music really? too, yeah. Uh -huh. So she became a really big fan. Um, so that's kind of how I first found out about Korea was, mm -hmm. yeah, through like K-pop, I guess. Okay, and this yeah. was in Australia, of course, yep. before you ever had the chance to come to Korea. Yep. So um, when did you first come to Korea and for, you know, for what reason, what brought you to Korea? Oh, okay. So that, that was in... I think 2008, 2009 was when I first came to Korea. Mm -hmm. So I, um, at that time in Australia, if you graduate high school, there's mm -hmm. this event called Schoolies, where at, at, once everyone graduates high school, they go to the Gold Coast and have a big celebration. We finished high school, it's a big party. Mm -hmm. But I don't really like, um, I'm not a big partier. And so mum knew that and she said to me, why don't we go to Korea instead? Uh -huh. So mum and I actually went and, cause we knew that there was a TVXQ concert on. So she's like, let's try and go and get tickets. And uh -huh. so we went, we came to Korea and we literally stood outside in like minus six degrees for eight hours yeah. trying to get tickets. Oh my goodness. And we didn't have proper jackets cause where we're from, it's very hot. And um, we didn't get tickets that day, but we did the same thing next day and we got tickets and we got to see the concert. But that, um, that trip really kind of opened my eyes to, oh, like Korea's more than K-pop, more than mm. like the variety shows that I had seen. And mm -hmm. so that was when I got to experience Korean food and, and, and so on. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So I guess, yeah, that was your opportunity to find out about Korean culture as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is that why you decided to learn Korean and, uh, you know, maybe introduce the Korean culture to uh, Australians? Yeah. Um, so at that time I had had a, f a friend teach me how to read Korean. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Korea, I could, I could read, but I didn't necessarily know much oh, what I, I was see. reading. Uh -huh. And then, so I thought I'm going to go, when I'm at university, I'm going to learn Korean and, and do my best. Uh -huh. And I went on exchange. And then once I graduated university, mm -hmm. I didn't go to Korea for two years. Um, and I was forgetting my Korean. And I thought, this, this is really sad. I spent so long trying to learn it. And so I thought, I need to make myself study. Mm -hmm. And I always enjoyed YouTube and I thought if I make a channel in Korean, it's gonna force me to study, I can't be lazy. Hey. But I was wondering what I should make because I always was interested in film and things. And it's so, 
I just started making cooking videos, mm -hmm. but it kind of morphed into to showing my friends sort of Korean culture or me filming when I went to Korea because it just was more of a natural progression, if you can mm -hmm. put it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right, and here you are. Yeah. Yeah, here so you are. So many years later. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you find so charming about Korea? What do you love or like so much about Korea? That's a, that's a tough question too, because <laughs> it's a long answer. So I'll, I'll try to make it short, but I think, I, I mean, obviously the food really gets mm -hmm. me because I, I love the food culture here, if you mm -hmm. can put it like that. I love the passion people have for food and sharing food. Because uh -huh. um, it's changing in Australia, but back then, you know, you order your meal, this person orders their meal and you, and you eat your meal, they eat their meal. Uh -huh. And I came to Korea and everyone was sharing food and they were like, have some of mine. And everyone was so generous and they would, and they would have some of yours. And, and I was like, what is happening? Everyone's just like, <laughs> I was so used to like, don't touch my food and like, you can have one chip, but that's. I'm still like that yeah. I hate people touching my food. Oh, so you're still in that mind. Yeah, but of course, yes, the Korean yeah. eating culture, it's all about like sharing, yes. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so, and that's one aspect that I really love. And so I've gone the other way now when when I go back to Australia mm -hmm. and someone doesn't offer me their food, I'm like, why aren't you? <laughs> I get, and then I'm like, oh, I'm in Australia, of course. But that's one aspect I love. And then I think just, you know, I have so many Korean friends now who are just mm -hmm. such amazing people and such hard workers. And I love, I love that aspect of, of people working hard to build mm -hmm. what they want. And, and it's just, because again, I love, I love Australia so much, but you know, we're very relaxed people as well. Uh -huh. And I think sometimes it's, it's great when I'm in Korea, people are like, come on, let's go, let's go do stuff. And mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's lovely. Is there maybe another part of culture, uh, uh, another part of Korean culture, you know, besides food, mm. um, special part of uh, Korean culture that you would like to introduce someday very soon yeah. uh, to Australians or, or to even anyone? Uh, yeah. Um, well, there is actually, um, recently I got to film with the K-Tigers mm -hmm. for Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And um, it got me thinking, because Taekwondo, there is quite a, uh, quite a few Taekwondo uh, places in Australia. And it got me thinking I would love to do a video in Australia um, and have Australians learn Taekwondo because I uh -huh. think that would be very interesting. Um, a lot of my, ch some things introducing Korean culture in Australia is difficult just because most Australians are in Australia mm -hmm. and sometimes you can't get certain things there. But I think it would be more interesting. I think the sporting culture is very interesting here. I would yeah. love if I ever had the chance to take like an Australian to Korea and like show them like the baseball and stuff, because baseball uh -huh. is not really a thing. And I know that's not traditional culture, but I still think it's very, very interesting. Yeah, it's very it's interesting. modern, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cause I, I'm not even interested in sports and I went to a baseball game and I was like, this is great. Like I get, I get it. Like almost yeah. everyone has a blast when they go to a yeah. Yeah, ballpark in Korea. I mean, it's, and it's so full of energy. It's so fun. It's so, so different. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I love that everyone with the, with the noise makers mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah. I just, it's, yeah, I had a blast. What do they call it? There's, they're just like balloon sticks. Yeah. Yeah. I, the best thing I saw was this um, lady and you know how they sell the beer when mm -hmm. they go around? Yeah. She had these two giant, like two liter, um, like the like plastic pitch, beer uh -huh, bottles and they were uh -huh. empty. Like the, the beer bottles and she was using them as, oh, really? as like the noise ah, makers. And yeah, I just, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I was yeah, like, going to watch that's ingenuity. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Well, unfortunately, time is almost up, but uh, I would like to ask if you have a message to deliver to your subscribers out there. I know you have uh, yeah. tons of them. Uh, so any message that you'd like yeah. to deliver to them? Um, should I look at a camera or sure, talk yes. to you? Uh -huh. um, Korean or English? Think. Anything you English. wish. Yes. Um, well, in English, thank you like so much. Any any subscribers or viewers, thank you so much for allowing me to do what I love. And if that makes you guys happy too, that makes me even happier. 정말 봐주셔서 감사합니다. 저할 말이 없어요. 그냥 너무 감동해요. 뭐 그런 그런 말이죠. I just yeah I I always find myself lost for words because the subscribers I've met in person mm -hmm. have always been such cool people. I feel like really lucky with my subscribers that they're all such like nice and just in, genuinely very interesting people. So mm -hmm. yeah, if, looking forward to meeting many of you in the future if you're if you're about to see me on the road. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I'm sure your subscribers will love that. Thank you so much for your time and actually for the opportunity for, for um, letting us know how a bokbang yeah. is done, you know, giving us a clear idea of how it's done. It's very interesting to um, 
yeah, hear about how you are so in love with the Korean culture and how you really enjoy doing what you do. And uh, I'd like to thank you for spreading, uh, I don't know, spreading Korea, spreading Korean culture to uh, the world, to your Australian friends and uh, not only Australia, but people around the world. Thank you for introducing the uh, unique cultures uh, of Korea. And once again, for joining us on today's Heart to Heart. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Thanks for having me. Thank you.